one minute early, but I'll just charge over overtime pay. <laughs> it's a delight to be with you and to share in uh, communion service with you again on, on this day. Yesterday was Reformation Sunday, for those of you who are not uh, Roman Catholic. Roman Catholics obviously don't observe that day. I've opted not to observe the day, partly because I forgot, <laughs> and uh, partly because uh, it's not a, a, an actual traditional observance Sunday anyway. So it will just be a, uh, a regular Sunday. Our first hymn is actually a song. It's just the praise God from whom all blessings flow. verses. Then Jesus said to the disciples, someone who was rich had a manager or steward and charges were brought that the manager was squandering the property. So the rich person summoned the manager and said, what is this I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager thought, what will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am too ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning the rich person's debtors one by one, the manager asked the first, how much do you owe my master? The debtor answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. The manager said, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then the manager asked another, and how much do you owe? That debtor replied, a hundred containers of wheat. The manager said, take your bill and make it eighty. So the rich person commended the unjust manager for acting shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unjust wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is unjust in a very little is unjust also in much. Then, when you have not been faithful with the unjust, you will entrust to you the true riches. And if you have not been faithful to what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No person who is enslaved can serve two masters at the same time. For such a person will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The word of the Lord.
This is one of those parables that uh, is curious. It seems on the surface that Jesus is saying to us that we should win friends by using unjust means. That's what it says, unjust wealth. Or in the King James, mammon. You may remember that word. But what is it really about? Here is a wealthy man who has a manager, a steward of his accounts, who is skimming some money off the top. There's two interesting things here. One is that the rich owner was not having regular audits to check up. He trusted the manager. The second is that the manager was not to be trusted. And so someone tells the owner that the steward is unfaithful. So he fires him. He says, settle the accounts, get the books in order, you're fired. And the manager says, what am I going to do? I'm a white-collar worker. I can't become a blue-collar worker. I don't know how. And I've been in a position of authority so long, I can't beg. I'd be ashamed to do that. So how am I going to live? And so he lives by reducing what everybody owes to the owner so that they'll call him friends so that when he knocks on the door and says, I need a place to stay for tonight, they say, oh, come on in. You saved me a whole bunch of oil. You saved me a whole bunch of wheat. And in the parable, the owner commended the manager for his cleverness. Now, he obviously was already clever. He was already skimming money that the owner didn't notice. But Jesus says, make friends with the unjust wealth. That is the things of this earth. It's not that it's unrighteous in the sense of, of illegal. It's that the things of this world are not just. Everything in this world is temporary and will end. Jesus says, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And so what he's commending here is that the people of this world who know all about finances, who know all about scheming, they make friends. They make plans. They make things work using the unjust wealth, or in the King James, mammon. And Jesus says, well, they're clever enough to do that, and they're smarter than the children of light, because the children of light are looking only at making heavenly treasures. So it sounds like he's saying, we're a little stupid to keep our eyes to the sky. We better do something else. And again, that's not what it's saying. I mean, it's what it's saying, but where Jesus is going with this is, you're living in this world, even though you're to store up treasure in heaven, you've got to manage your business in this world. So learn accounting. Learn investing. Learn business management. Learn corporate psychology. Learn human resources. Learn all the things that make business function in this world. But that is not what you are to pledge your loyalty to. It's not the business schemes that you pledge your loyalty to as people of, of the children of this world. You're using those as tools to do the business in this generation, but you are still children of light. It's a question of loyalty. That's why you have to read to the end of 13. You cannot serve business practices and God you have to serve God and use business practices to bring glory to God. Some of you may have read the book In His Steps by Charles Sheldon, who was a preacher in New York. And the book is actually a series of evening sermons, Sunday evening sermons that he gave. It was originally titled, What Would Jesus Do? And in it, the whole question of loyalty comes out so that the 
uh, newspaper editor begins to realize he's got to give proper news, not sensational news. He's not got to cater to those who buy advertising, but to be correct and accurate. And so with all the other people who take up this challenge to ask, what would Jesus do? Let's walk in his steps, doing what Jesus did. The editor of the newspaper did not quit. He did not stop being a newspaper editor, but he changed his loyalty from being a good newspaper editor making money to a Christian who happened to be a newspaper editor. This parable is very powerful because it appears to be one thing, but the real story is, what are you loyal to? To Jesus and the ways of Jesus or to the schemes and techniques of the world? You cannot serve both God and unjust wealth, mammon. May we perpetually, always, faithfully pledge our loyalty and our service to God and use all of the tools that are in this world to do God's work but our loyalty remains to Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed through that blood, serving and reconciling all people to you. Remember your church scattered upon the face of the earth. Gather it in unity and preserve it in truth. Remember the saints who have gone before us. Today we remember Lee Pritchard and any others that come to your mind. In communion with them and with all creation, we worship and glorify you always through your begotten Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit paraclete, in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us share the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his friends, and he broke bread, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And he took the cup, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show forth the death of Jesus Christ until he comes again. 
again as before. Let us pray. We give thanks, thanks, Almighty God, God that you, you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world, united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Now let us go with this assurance that the rich owner will tend to us and care for us and advise us and we are not alone in our walk in this life for the Spirit walks with us and may we know the love of God upon us this day and always. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. <laughs>